So I came across a casting method by my Ford boy that piqued my interest. Basically, he's using lost PLA mixed with sand casting. So basically, he 3D prints parts, pours some investment around them, burns out the PLA, puts that into a sand casting box, and then continues as he would normally with sand casting. I'm not sure that I've seen this method anywhere else, and that brought up two questions. One, what's the point? And two, does it work at whatever that point is? To best answer these questions, I tried it myself. Are you ready to watch me fail? Repeatedly, because this is 10 tries. I 3D printed the parts I'd like to create. Then I made a box of aluminum foil, packaging tape, and cardboard. I cover the edges with some silicone to seal the bottom. I also put a thin layer on the bottom of my 3D printed parts to glue them to the foil. I pour some investment into the box I made and vibrate the bubbles out. I let it cure for 24 hours and then remove the aluminum foil and cardboard. Before burning out the PLA, I make a tower with some stainless steel plates, stainless steel wire, and the blocks of investment. Now I put them inside the furnace. I program the temperature controller to heat up to 650 degrees Celsius, hold at that temperature for one hour, and slowly return to room temperature. I would normally use my burnout schedule, but in my Ford boys video, he just says he slowly increased the temperature to 650 degrees Celsius. I made sure that the temperature did not increase or decrease faster than 2 degrees Celsius per minute, which that's how I would interpret slowly. As you can see, one of my blocks broke during the burnout. It looks like the temperature changes were too fast for the plaster because it was far too close to the heating element. I can do better next try. One piece of the surviving block fell, but I can drill out that hole later. I remove the ash and other debris from inside the pattern, and then I prepare the cope and drag. I melt some aluminum and pour into the pouring basin. Let's check what we have now. It looks pretty good. The details are very impressive. Those layer lines are so clear and the corners are sharp. Using my janky mini mill, I remove the gates and sand down a few small imperfections off of the parts. I also file down the rectangular cutout in the center of the die so that some flat bar steel can fit through. After four hours in the tumbler, they look pretty cool. So why is this an improvement over sand casting? Many shapes can be created that would simply fail if you tried to sand cast them. Without the proper draft angles, a pattern can't be removed from the sand without damaging the cavity. So why is this better than lost PLA? The sand allows the pouring basin to be much higher than the cavity without using more investment. This way, the aluminum fills the cavity at a higher pressure due to the weight of the aluminum above. Investment is expensive, so substituting reusable casting sand is a definite win. I'm a little surprised that someone as experienced at metal casting as my Ford boy would say that a burnout is simply raising the temperature slowly to 650 degrees Celsius. Really, you should follow the investment manufacturer's burnout schedule, or at least a burnout schedule of a similar investment formula. Maybe I'm nitpicking here, because a little bit of investment mixing in with the sand likely isn't a big issue. And I'm certain I've made my own mistakes while explaining things on, well, uh, lots of things. So, am I going to start lost PLA sand casting everything I make? No. I have to give it to my Ford boy though. This is a very useful process for larger cast parts that have odd design elements that can't really be sand cast. Check back soon for try two and what contraption I'm making with all these parts.